My name is Jacob Marble. I'm a software engineer at Influx Data. Let's talk about the Influx DB data model. This is the data model that you'll need to understand to successfully deploy your application using InfluxDB. InfluxDB is a time series database, so it structures data a little differently to relational databases, document databases, key value databases. Being a time series database, we've designed it uh, from the very bottom with time series in mind. We store data in measurements. This measurement is named weather, and it's a good place to keep track of things like uh, temperature, humidity, uh, wind speed and direction. The CPU measurement is a good place to record CPU temperature and CPU utilization. And the API measurement is a good place to store application performance metrics for our API. Most of our customers organize their application around a few measurements. Measurements are grouped into buckets. If you understand relational databases already, then you might think of an InfluxDB measurement like a relational table, an InfluxDB bucket like a relational database. This bucket is called infrastructure. We named it infrastructure because it stores information that's useful to help us keep our infrastructure healthy. We've assigned the infrastructure bucket a one month retention policy. That's because one month is, we've decided, enough time for us to effectively monitor the health of our infrastructure. Retention policy is something interesting and different about time series data. A lot of times you store time series data, it's only useful for a certain period of time, and then it becomes less useful as time passes. So in the background, InfluxDB will delete the data in these measurements belonging to the infrastructure bucket after it becomes a month old. This is a process that happens in the background, happens more or less continuously, and so your application doesn't need to worry about that. Let's talk about the finance bucket. The finance bucket is somewhere that we might store uh, customer payment events. And we've given it a retention policy of two years. Two years because two years is long enough to run reports over year to date, trailing 12 months, or last calendar year. The account bucket is where we'll store information about our customer accounts. This is a good place to keep maybe personally identifiable information uh, because it's separate from the other places that we store the rest of our data. Also, our account bucket has an infinite retention policy. Infinite because we don't know how long any one account will exist. And so we want to track each account through its entire lifetime and let our application take ownership of deleting just that account's data when the time is right. Even though we store our data in three different buckets with three different retention policies, we can tie it all together using the Flux query language. The Flux query language is a data processing language, again designed with time series in mind. It has some built-in features like the ability to compute derivatives, uh, histograms, and exponential moving averages. Flux also includes some of the more traditional data processing features like pivot and join. So for example, the marketing team would like to identify accounts with high cost and low revenue. They wanna watch that ratio over time, especially as marketing campaigns are launched. Well, we could query revenue data from finance, cost data from infrastructure, and tie those together with the account bucket, all with one flux query. All data within a measurement has timestamp, fields, and tags. Let's look at this weather measurement, for example. We have a couple of weather stations. And they collect wind speed in knots, wind direction in degrees every five minutes. The timestamp exists for all data stored in InfluxDB. This is time series data after all. Internally, we use the timestamp to sort or order this data so that it's always stored in time order. Fields are the data that vary over time. This is the information that's most interesting for our application, for our users. 
fields have name and type. So this field name is wind speed and its type is floating point. This field name is wind direction and its type is integer. Tags are metadata to describe our field data. Here we've used the location tag to indicate which weather station collected which data. When we go back to query this data, we'll leverage the location to filter or group by the location or which weather station collected what data. Well, that's an overview of the InfluxDB data model. We can't wait to see what you build next.